Okay, and we're back. So I have whip stitched the edge of the skirt and the bodice together down around that point. Changed my thread because it ran out. And now we're going to be whip stitching around our pleats. Now, I use a doubled over thread for attaching all of my skirts and bodices just to give it that extra bit of strength. And I'm also stitching with this lovely reproduction thimble ring because it saves my fingers, but I still have that tactile sensation that I like of feeling my needle and feeling the fabric, kind of where things are poking through. So I'm just going to push it through with my fingers and then push it through the rest of the way with the thimble until I can pull it out the other side. And what we are looking at, this is kind of awkward trying to do it in camera view and see what I'm doing. Thanks for being amusing or being amused with my very first one of these videos. So at the base of that pleat, I'm going to do two whip stitches right next to it. one and two. I'm going to pull out this needle so I don't stab myself and it's not in the way. And then around the base of the other side, so we kind of fluff these pleats and make them lay nice, we're going to do two more of those whip stitches. Very specifically trying to anchor this pleat in place. And I kind of like to do a knot around that. I've had a couple times where, especially if I'm wearing a long train and I've done this, um, not everyone's watching where they're going or I might not be managing my little kitten tail as well as I should be. And that knot has helped me keep people from popping every pleat I have on that skirt or at least a good six inch chunk of it and needing emergency repairs. Um, ideally you should never need that problem but or have that problem but if your thread isn't awesome or they really just kind of hunkered down on your fabric. So there you go our very first pleat is done as I ramble. So we're just going to keep whip stitching along And I'm not going to say these are necessarily the tiniest or neatest stitches in the world. I'm looking at just under an inch between each of these pleats right here. And a little bit wider, it'll give it a little bit more of a plush look to the pleats when we're done for the front. Let's take this other pin out because we don't need it anymore. We're at the base of our next pleat. So... Another two whip stitches, two whip stitches on the other side. And a knot and we'll be good to go. So you don't have to do a knot on each of these. That's just sort of a habit I've picked up. I pretty sure the instructions I had never included that and I don't know that I've seen it in an extent garment so take it as you will all right we are so close to the end but I'm gonna have to change thread again okay one more whip stitch and we're gonna knot this off that is something you do see in a lot of 16th century clothing, they did knot their threads and kind of tuck ends back in, or at least it looks like they may have tried and over the years threads have worked their way out. The Victorians seem to be the ones, as far as I can tell, that were really all about not knotting their threads. Um, I personally prefer to do it that way, but again, if it's not your jam, it's not your jam. The end goal is really to just have a 
garment that's going to be put together well and make you happy, right? It's kind of my goal. All right. Um, this is a chunk of beeswax. It is shaped like bananas from a couple of wonderful friends of mine. They are actually some of the people that encouraged me to start making these videos. Thank you, Ben Han and Shoshana. Okay. I'm sure someone out there is going to tell me I'm threading this needle wrong. There we go. So again, because I am doing these stitches between a lot of layers of fabric, the bodice alone has about four layers after inner lining and, and so on, and then the skirt. And this is probably going to get a little bit more wear from just rubbing up against things and so on. I do double my threads for attaching my skirts. All right, I'm gonna do this again, see if I can do this. Sorry if the camera's bouncing a little bit. I'm trying to not have that happen. Yay, new tripod. All right. And we push. Remove the needle that's no longer needed. So I make that a habit. These pleats are fairly spaced apart on the front portion. The back of the skirt is going to have the same pleating treatment, but they're going to be really closely uh, packed in there to get an entire panel of this over the back of the bodice as well. So just kind of a good habit to be in in general. Okay. Just keep stitching, just keep stitching. Do, 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 do. So these videos are mostly for you guys. I am an incredibly shy person by nature, if we're being honest here. So I kind of am not sure what you're looking for and what you're needing help with. Please do shoot me, shoot me a line, put a comment, let me know if this was helpful. I would love to know if it was helpful to you guys. That way we can continue to find helpful things, other treatments that you might be curious about and needing some more help with. All right, there we go. And just a second here, we're going to wrap up the video by showing you the completed front portion, because if you can't hear, Miss Zoe Dog in the background really wants me to play with her. She's very sad that I am sewing and not playing with her and the alien. The alien is her favorite toy. Yes. So sad. So, so sad. <laughs> All right. And... I don't know if you are watching this video in the future or not. This is actually getting filmed during the ramp up of our COVID-19 social distancing that we're needing to do here in the States. So, because one of the things that's come out as a result of that, and rightly so, is that all of our SEA events locally are kind of canceled through May or at least through the beginning of May, they'll take stock later. And in my personal experience, I have found that if I go that long without trying on my very fitted 16th century clothing, um, I tend to not pay attention to stuff and my clothes didn't fit last time. 
when I moved, stuff wasn't quite fitting right. And I just snapped my thread. Dang it. So don't pull your threads too tight or you end up snapping them. I'm just going to keep working through with the doubled because I only have three more inches. Maybe. Oh, yes. I see you, Zoe. Hi, Zoe. Hi, baby. Hi, baby girl. Oh, hi. Hi. Mommy's almost done. Off. 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 Thank you, baby. Good baby. So anyway, back to what I was saying. I know that we're all kind of working on projects, finishing up UFOs, trying to keep everybody healthy. I would love to know what kind of UFOs you guys are working on. And I'm also going to encourage you to go and put on your garb every once in a while. Just make sure stuff is still fitting the way you're wanting it to. Um, I know I stress eat sometimes. And I would hate for my garb to not fit me again and have to build a new wardrobe. Because I don't have time for that. I, I don't want to have to build a whole new wardrobe. I'm kind of a clothes horse. Alright. Almost there. So... You can see we're getting some of these lovely shaped pleats now. Um, when I'm working on skirts that are this big, it's usually easiest for me to spread it out a bit on a table and sit with part of it in my lap. It gives me a good sense of control over the project itself. And I don't know if in this version of the video or not, if I explained why it's only going down this far, the edges of your skirts when you put in cartridge pleats need to be finished. And that should be your skirts in that this time period were always lined anyway. So if you're wanting to cheat on historical practice but still do this attachment technique, one of my cheats has been to get a tiny almost like a facing and hem the or put that facing into your skirting as a fake lining almost that way your whip stitching around that finished clean edge this is going to protect the edge of your skirt from fraying over time if you're not finishing it I don't own a serger I'm not honestly not really a fan of the overlocked look and these guys didn't have them either let's be honest so I just figure out ways to do without in, F in an effort to try and maintain some thought process on well if they didn't have this how did they do it during that time period so the answer is linings linings facings all such good things and of course like with a bobbin on a machine i ran out of thread with an inch to go so we are going to just do a couple of these stitches around kind of securing down the tails of that other thread we just finished off Okay, so finishing these off, you're going to see I've got the edge of my bodice and this last little chunk. I'm going to put those two edges together and I'm going to whip stitch around that. Which is a lot of fabric, which is again why you need to be using a thimble. Please, please, please use a thimble. I know they, they're kind of obnoxious to get used to if you're not used to using them. But if I had to think of one thing that's going to actually make it easier to do hand sewing and make this technique really helpful for you, it's use a thimble. Thimble ring, finger thimble, 
whatever is going to work best for you. I personally don't recommend those little plastic ones that you get. Thimbles are sized and it shouldn't fall off your finger, but should still feel secure. I don't know what else to tell you on that point. It took me a while to find a couple that I really like, and right at this point, I really like my little brass Victorian one, and I really like my thimble ring. Okay, and with that, we are done. Look at that. So that is the front of the skirt. All right. And I'm going to flip this so you guys can see what that front of this dress is going to look like now. She's got these lovely pleats. I'm getting washed out in contrast because of it being so black and me being so pale. But I hope you learned something on this video and found it super helpful. And if you'd like me to make some more, leave me a comment. Have a great day, guys.